Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to try another version. I've just done a version of the Hammerback that didn't come out very well at all. It's a long song for a man in my condition to try and play. Because um, I have to play rooted to the spot. I'm looking at the wrong place again. Hey there, how you doing? Because of my leg braces, you're not uh, doing my normal stuff. I still like to play like I did 45 years ago when I was on the streets. So I can't just... Well, there I am there, you know. Um, but I'm gonna try. I just want to sing this song for myself. It's called The Hell and Back. Mm, two, three, four, nineteen. You gonna stay in there? I was bleeding in memories from the wounds in my heart. Your shrapnel kisses left scars that never heal. Your henchman words took all of my defenses down and your penchant for cruelty. You feast upon innocence, but your appetite stays unseated. You lust for naivety, you don't care about its source. One day your walls will fall, your church will be desecrated. I've been to hell and back, and I'm going to teach you about me. You spoke in hieroglyphics to disguise your true intent. When I deciphered what you meant, the blood flows in my veins. Your smile was a road to nowhere, with minds laid on every curve. You whispered, make it to the bridge, and I'll give you what you deserve. This was like an autopsy. How to resist it? That's the game. My thoughts were all chained, but your sister slipped me the key. Beneath the sunset silhouette, I found the strength to survive. If you make it to hell and back, then come. I walked in your forgery footsteps I had to find out where they led You fed the wolves the muscles To keep them coming back for more You sing them lullabies Where the innocent are put to the sword I gave you the world once You sneered, is that all that you can afford? Black roses grow where your feet tread, martyrs pluck their bloom. When I met you I could see forever, I was blind when I left your room. You wrote your own destiny, a litany of emotional larceny, depravity and rage. Remember driving me to hell and back, here's your diary, skip the
place landmines in the playgrounds laughing everybody dies someday you dear eyed parents should thank me for taking the element of surprise away you mock the lame and meek saying seek and ye shall find no cure your pain is my sustenance now give me Sack the nurseries, screaming, give me my childhood lost. You can't escape the past grasp, and all you meet pay the cost. You spike the communion wine, cackling, say hi to your maker from me. I saw burning torches all the way to hell and back. You stole a widow's tears Using them to disguise your lies Asking a jury of your so-called peers Won't you forgive me one more time? Whenever you open your cold word mouth The devil reappears One day someone will come along And exact a price for you First time I embraced you, your lips were like a switchblade on my neck. The dawn was a journey I didn't think I would get to make. I found strength I never knew I had to free myself from your clutch. You cast me off the hell and back. Half of that journey you're about to make. say praise false idols you speak those words into the looking glass branding your dark commandments into the flesh of newborn babes I heard pleas for liberty echo off your dungeon soul depravity and decadence are you stuck in trade your Conscience is a vacuum where nothing can exist. Your smile is like a crucifixion, the slow and high is death. One day the slain will rise and in vain will be your forgive me cries.
Hope that came out okay. I was using an open mic there, but uh, <clears throat> I used to do that in the coffee houses, you know. I look back at some of this footage now and everything, and uh, when you're out on stage, you don't do it so much, you know, because you're kind of locked into the position by the microphone, and especially there's in the band uh, uh, and everything. But uh, but back in the coffee house days, it was the Red House Coffee House. Cafe it was. Well, it was an art center, they called it, you know, where they sold coffee and everything. Although we could never afford anything, we just go in and the lovely lady there, she let us have a glass of water for free. If we washed up, then uh, we could have a warm drink. We always used to ask for our washing up gloves, though. <laughs> Um, because we didn't want the calluses on our fingers getting soft, you know. Soft hands that do dishes. <laughs> and it was all set out, you know, the tables there. And I mean, this is in Chard in 1981, I guess, somewhere like 82 maybe, I think I went. Ended up back there for about uh, six, eight months, I don't know. And, uh... <laughs> Uh, be, I mean, they were so good to us. Uh, used to like put paintings up on the wall. They produced a little magazine as well. I can't remember what it was called. Like a little fanzine uh, on coloured paper. And uh, this was around, I remember one had the Falklands War and had something about the Falklands War on it, so it was around that time. And Greenham Common was big then as well, you know. Yeah, always raising money to send the women at Greenham Common. <laughs> And now all the nukes are coming back, you know. And uh, Steve will be there singing alone now. How did it go, Steve? Somewhere up there, wasn't it? Oh, I had a dun 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 Mohican and his mohair jumper and everything. But he was very rich, or his parents were very rich, so he used to live in the squat. <laughs> I've told this story several times, but I uh, never know which one of these videos is going to survive. And so we were living in this squat in Chester House. Flat 3 was mine. Is Flat 3 Chester House still going? Man, that place has still got <laughs> no doors and no windows. And, uh, so you know, we'd be there starving, and then on a Sunday, his his mother would come down with a plate. I mean, just you know, to us it was like something out of you know, to the man of born or something. And they lived near there as well, I believe, you know, half of half of Somerset, maybe exaggeration. But she would come down, and offer come the lid and plate, and there would be this warm Sunday dinner. I mean, we, Steve was a vegetarian, so there's no meat on. Peas and roast pudding and uh, roast potatoes and that. And we'd just be sitting there like Pavlov's dog going. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> I was a bit out. Anyway, so we do this coffee. So they had a boy, a young lad that they employed for I don't know, 10 pence a day or something. He was probably more than that, maybe 50 pence a day. And he was a sandwich, just like Tony Hancock, you know, the sandwich man. He had a sandwich board on in the Red House Dilla. And he'd be walking around like that. I remember some of the guys in the squad say, this is exploitation. I mean, we were in there, they were let, this is, talk about biting my hand that almost literally feeds you, like, you know. So write a protest song about it. You shall not make a ten-year-old boy be your sandwich man. This is where we are gonna make a stand. A song in there somewhere. I wonder if I've got a G harmonica with a decent reading. I think this is a C from yesterday. Yeah. I might try call me fair lost. I'm picking up a lot of buzz from the open mic, but just take the first G harmonica that we find. <laughs> a cute little dust bunny. 
Oh yeah, I was saying, yeah, so if you can imagine, you know, that. And I was a lot more intense back in those days as well, you know, back in the uh, days of youth. Some people that have been drinking that well, eating their beans on toast and uh, whatever they were eating now, they're, they're doing it. So it used to be a Sunday, I used to go and play there on a Sunday. Because nothing else was open in, in England that on a Sunday, you know, you could open a cafe and that was about it. I don't think the shop's even open all week, you know. Maybe sitting there drinking away. It's that Murphy boy and I'd be prowling around on it. Singing my songs about drug addicts and uh, social degradation and everything. Degradation and deprivation. And yeah, yeah, I don't know so much about this, Jonathan. It's not too late to travel, but there's nowhere left to go. We fought a losing battle, but the victors needn't know. Let me hold you tenderly and ease away your fears. You know you've got a friend in me if the logic reappears I saw you walk the minefield you had stardust in your eyes and in your footsteps when I kneeled you didn't seem surprised it's not too late to change things the picture still looks good you know that when my phone rings, I'd answer if I could. Let's get off this rodeo and put both feet on the ground. It don't matter where we go, I'll make sure love's in town. I didn't make the river freeze, but I'll help you get across. And if that doesn't put your mind at ease, you can call me if you're lost.
share this again. I can't think of a better way to finish a 45-year career than singing my song about friendship, thinking about my children as I was doing so, catching glimpses of them flashing by on the screen behind me. Dylan and Emily, love you too. Dad loves you with all his heart and soul. Just as a chronological update, Dylan, it is five days from your 12th birthday. Okay, so five days from your 12th birthday.